So here we go. And this is, I was saying, this is just for us and a listen in for the QLI. So because they're listening in, how about giving a very concise, compact um, um, understanding of what you two do, <laughs> what your spiritual work is all about? Like, you like wanna... 10 minutes or less. <laughs> oh, well, it'll, it'll, it'll be way less than 10 way less minutes. Than so what Ken and I do is we excavate the sacred languages of Hebrew and Aramaic, which really in the process is learning how to translate translate oneself through the sacred languages. Um, so we've we've talked about it before. We've actually called it metaology. And uh, meta is actually a Hebrew word uh, instead of using it rather than the Greek word. Um, but really the best way I can describe it with what these languages are about, Ken and I actually were talking about it this morning, is that they are the quantum light language. Um, because every single word can have a, a positive side, a negative side, and a neutral side, because it's meant for us to be able to unify duality into singularity. Mm -hmm. And as we excavate these verses out, we are really um, doing the same thing within us, because it is connected to our DNA. Um, it is connected in so many ways to not only science, but to the ether, to that which is beyond. It's called the white fire if you want to call it. And then we transfer this incredible knowledge through the ether, the white fire, and then it gets condensed into the black fire, which is the letters. And then when we take it, excavate it, ingest it, it then expands within us. And so what does it do? It increases the white fire within. And that's what we do. And so we have, we have a group that we teach a couple yeah. days a week and we share on YouTube and we share on Facebook and um, lately, there's been some pretty amazing things that have been coming to light, and I'm I am really excited to be living in this day and age. There is no doubt about it. It's this, incredible. This is more of a like Harry was saying, just to touch on in, in another aspect of it. It's it's very much a forensic work, mm -hmm. and um, and I want to make clear that whoever's listening to this that it's not it's not you can skip a stone across this, but this is meant to sink. It's meant to go very deep. Um, it's it's really based on the revelation of a willingness to excavate your own becoming mm -hmm. through the generous experience of intimacy. It's actually it's actually making love. It's in its frequency vibration. It's actually giving to the template that we comprehend, or well, some of us comprehend compassion. But this whole language is a language of compassion that equates as making love, and there it's the fulfillment of a family trust. It's an order. It's a um, it's like the language of the law of the sea because it's very much flow. Mm -hmm. And so it's te because we're limited in the perspective to articulate what it is, but it's the language of essence of flow into a state of being as naturalized. Mm -hmm. And it's incremental, of course. It, it's based on our willingness to go into a forensics um, of self-excavation to reveal a deeper measure of our, our tomorrow through our today, right, kind of a thing. And so that's what it is. And it, it draws us in. So there's we've seen a lot of people that have skipped stones and this is the letter because it's very clunky and and it's i go hmm, that's not for me i've never been that way it's more or less a soaking this is all about saturation of water because it's the vibration we call it water but it's more of a frequency water is just what we call it um but it's learning how to soak and to saturate that you're fully absorbed in the awareness of who you are and in the process of doing that, it actually produces chaya within you. Um, chaya is a, a word that means uh, life, salvation, and um, to connect to something that you've shared, it actually produces centropy. I use the word negentropy, um, uh, but it's the same thing. Centropy, negentropy, where you're actually producing light instead of being in the reverse entropic spin, it reverses your spin so that you are a giver of light and energy instead of a taker of light and energy. So, mm -hmm. and it does it very naturally, very gradually. Um, it's beautiful how it happens because it's really passive in nature because as you study, it just begins to root out the shadows until you're completely turned and you're in a negentropic state. Well, so, yeah, it's nature. It is. It's that's, actually, that's why I was saying yeah. it. it's your natural state of being. The language is nature. In harmony with nature. Just say one word. If someone was to ask me what is it, mm -hmm. I, I would say it's just a nature. Yeah. Or as a state of being. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, you know, um, I find it very connective from my perspective, 
to what we're doing with quantum logic interactive because there there are various aspects of it but the two main ones is what we're giving out what we're opening a, a, a path for the kin the kindred as i call them to come through that path to do some very special work for the planet with energies energy frequencies and why exactly. do they need us well i asked that question and that is because we have the crystalline dna of this reality frame and no matter that they're a kindred even the inner earth kindred that very much like us humans and they can even come up and walk around for a while uh, but it's it's different their realm has a slightly removed dimension and that's not just that. It's that we were born and raised in this dimension, in this frequency, on this earth. When we were born, our parents were on this planet as it is and in this reality frame, more importantly. So um, it's they say, the, the kindred say, that um, in order for us, for them to truly ground the frequency and move into that space and work with it um, on, a, on a micro dimension, they need to access it through the crystalline DNA of willing and aware human beings that offer that part in the whole dynamic. And that's what so that that's one aspect of it. Now, the other aspect of it is you know, given you shall receive. Well, the receiving is moving back into our frequencies and helping us to uh, recalibrate our genetic field, our crystalline field, so that, well, obviously, so that we can be better human beings and healthier and, and more connected, but also the more we are, the better tool we are, the better use of use we are for the greater picture of what they're doing with their part, you know? So it's a, it's a circle. That goes yep. through all those frameworks, and and so I would say I've not used that language before, but I like what you just said that it is sort of a love affair with the the universe and with the planet for sure, and um, the beings that are come together to do this particular job with us. But of course, they work with many other things too. Uh, they Thoth has given me the name of Noblis Terranata, Noblis Terranata, or Nada. Is it Noblis Terranata? Not the, I think it's not the, and um, and you know, no noble earth. I'm not sure what not is about, but the, the, the noble it's not noble like oh, I'm noble. It's it's no. noble used in the word that you know some some energy frequencies are called noble. Some you know it's it's a it's a royal frequency of of perpetuation. So it, it's meant in that those terms, sort of an alchemical term. Um, so. Um, Anyway, what do you feel about that? Am I am I stretching things or do you I think that, that? Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's so much in that because things. that's very similar to where we are. Like that's what we can kind we can connect with what you're doing through through our frequency. And I think that's beautiful because as soon as you share stuff, um I like I'm going like my head is just going like, oh, I can so connect with with our language because the language of return is based on reciprocity. And the, the language of reciprocity, this is why from our perspective. We are in the language of Adam. We are in the language of what it is, and we're, we're waiting for Adam Kadmon. It's the same language of Adam, and it means a root race. But this language is we have to really comprehend. Um, we are inter moving in integration through reciprocity, and that's the language of a fallen rise or drawing in and out. And so it's the same language, and, and I mean this in the most innocent way. It's the same language of inner course. Mm -hmm. That's why you can connect it with lovemaking because, but it's not in the expression of duality or an or outside external. party. Right. It's really through the self, through the self awareness and realization of going into yourself to draw out a measure to see the reflection, and everything of the language that connect with, with what you're sharing. Um, the noble language is based off. It's actually the, for 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 me. It's harasha, and it's the first word in, in the Bible, better she, but it's first occurrence. Of who it is, it means a genesis, but that's a Greek word. But it means a noble people again. Mm -hmm. It's a lineage of line, or the language of where we even get legacy, or the language of inheritance or possession. So we're learning to integrate into an inheritance by each day through reciprocity, drawing in and out. 
to get a better glimpse of who we are to move into a higher perspective. That's how I connected with Sacrament with you um, to go like, wow, because Sacrament is actually two positions and then inner midway point. There's a doorway of reciprocity that you must enter in. One's an offering to say, here's a template. And the other one's like, you have to go in and out to fully, because she's an offering. She is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. She's a being, mm -hmm. but she's an essence that is waiting for someone, like you call it kindred. Well, that's the language of what I call kind and race. And it's a noble race of kindred that are waiting for those that can acclimate to this level so that can be like, um, we're building the cup they're the infilling, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And yeah. that's the language of the rest of the box. Basically, you're building a water vessel or a water skin, and hopefully it's expanded enough to be indwelled by a dimension that's outside of time. Yes, and this brings us to the grail uh, from the Thothic perspective. Now, that doesn't discount Mary Magdalene as a grail or this or that. There's a lot of different, and they're all really true. Uh, but um, from his perspective and the work that he's doing, it represents obviously a cup is a divine feminine aspect, but it is it is the crucible for the genetic field, not just of a particular family, but of the genetic field of the whole Adam Kadmon human race coming through the nobility, the noble, not again, not like royalty and stuff, but the noble element. And that's what, according to Thoth, Melchizedek, Lord Melchizedek from Venus brought to this earth in his genetic experience. And it was propagated into this grail family um, that, you know, went through all these stages. I just did a huge series on it, you know, to, to get, but it wasn't about, it wasn't about, oh, we are the royal family. We're going to stay that way. It was about putting it out into all of humanity, see, but it yes. had to be nurtured first. And it's still, the aspects of it are still having to be nurtured, but but almost everybody on the planet by now has some aspect of that, that heritage within them because it moves not only genetically, but parigenetically. And parigenetics is a word that Thoth gave God back in the 1970s. And it, it basically very, there's a lot to it, but basically it means it, you don't have to, Mary have a or whatever and have a child and that child carries your genetics, your blue eyes, your brown hair, or whatever down through the I mean your tendency for this or that or kleptomania <laughs> down through the down through the lineage. I mean that's genetics, but parigenetics is is multidimensional. When you're it comes with your soul, and when your soul enters the body, it that is bringing the parigenetic frequency with it many lifetimes, but only the purest noble quality not not the fact that you kind of missed the mark in past life and you you know messed around with somebody's wife or something you know yeah. all of that is let let aside if you have any noble uh alchemical within you that is going to be delivered through your perigenetic field now what about people who really messed up well that that's a sleeper it's like they can't really get in touch with it because they don't have enough noble energy yet. No soul is not redeemable, but you know, so I'm just playing the both sides of the fence here talking about it, yeah, but, yeah. but they, every human being just about every human being, no matter how shady they may be in some one way or the other has some of the noble energy that will be perpetuated and you don't ever have to have a child to do it. Yeah, and it perpetuates both down the lineage from your if you have kids, and have kids or whatever, or up the lineage. It actually changes the the frequency of your grandparents, your ancestors, in some degree. Quantified how that whole uh, uh, energy field to be regenerated up the line, because of course for us everything is linear, but that's not the way the higher universe operates. No. You know, so the perigenetics is that golden cup, or at least it's in the golden cup, the field that that, that uh, is regenerative. And of course, then there's the red road and the white road, the red being the blood path of generation and the white road being the Christic stream that enters that field and ignites it for higher, uh, higher, you know, evolution. Anyway, mm -hmm. on and on and on. But when you talk about what you're saying, that's what comes to mind for me, you know? Yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. You know, that's 
they have found, science has actually found, uh, Greg Braden has done a lot of work on this, that the ancient Hebrew lang language, the Akkadian flame letters, A-K-A, the light letters are actually within our genetics, within our DNA itself. Yes. And yes. what's so fascinating with that is that as we study, and you know, this call, by the way, the language, we don't tell people that they have to study it. It is an opportunity for those who are being called to study it because of the work that it's doing within the genetic coding, but also the, the parent genetics that you're talking about. Because as we access these codes, it begins to unlock things that have been bound. And it does go in multi-directions because it is quantum in nature. And, and we share that with our, our, our family that we're teaching right now about the quantum realm of this language, past, pe present, future, all simultaneously. In fact, Ken has been working very strongly on um, our teachings and returning it back to origin, to source in the narrative of the Garden of Eden, which we know is a much bigger picture. We've just been given well, the narrative. That's the root of nobility. Right. But going back to that place of Adam, when Chava, when Eve was removed from Adam, that's actually the negentropic state that mm -hmm. then has to be brought back into Adam. Mm -hmm. And the language does that. The mother of all living gets us into that negentropic centropic state i did want to share on this that um these royal frequencies the language is it has resonance to it you know it's it's very coded that when our eyes behold the letters and we begin taking a look at it when we work with those frequencies because the symbol and the energy is there it starts opening things right away um it's it's a coded language that begins to open wide things that have been hidden. But once the heart and the brain come into coherence with it, because it's not meant to just be a mental stimulation, it's meant to connect both so that we have that electromagnetism of the centropy zero point functioning without any chaos or confusion anymore, where it's self ordering and it's <coughs> in its natural state of being <laughs> yeah i call it back engineering a starship <laughs> pretty much and so the the fact that this is available for those who are being called to it we know that that whoever is entering into the languages in the study of themselves is actually assisting all of humanity mm -hmm. because of the collective consciousness that there are new neural pathways that are being written so that people can get on that highway and all of a sudden their thinking shifts um, you know, it, it shifts into levels that weren't there before because some of those walls and boundaries have been broken down by those who are willing to do the shadow work because there's a collective shadow work that has to be done. And then there's the individual shadow work that needs to be done. So as we are turning ourselves, we are helping the collective with the greater consciousness in, in turning so that there is no longer any shadow and we're not dealing with the duality system that continues to war where we can become coherent coherent with one another, coherent with nature, coherent with the greater levels of densities and not just this density. It literally gives us access to all of the other ones and being able to move in and out of time as needed as we are being drawn by our, our own callings of what the creator, if you want to call it, um, is calling each individual fractal to do. I did want to also say that um, you had asked in one of the videos before you were talking about all these lords. And in English, lord means one thing. But when you actually go and look into the Hebrew and Aramaic aspect of it, lord um, has to do with sovereignty. And it has to do with those who have come through the bitter walk to raise themselves up that have been empowered into the sacred union of oneness are now sovereign beings. Another word for that would be masters. Uh, so Lord okay. Melchizedek would be master Melchizedek or yes. an ascended master if you want to. And it's, it is connected to Magda, to the Magdalene energy because without having the heart connect, you can't master the self. It's not something that can be just intellectually done. It yeah. has to be intellectually connected to the heart feeling process to unify it. So I wanted to share that with you because it's a beautiful I'm word. Yeah, I'm glad, word. I'm glad you did. You know, one of the things I'd like, I wanted to ask you, um, in the in the video I did on Messengers of Light, the Iglesu, um, yes. you know, with how that video came about. Sorry, I've got cat fur. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> it's not a nervous twitch. It's just when he comes by. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we, we all want the same thing. Uh, so, uh, but when how that video came about was, I had, I was watching something on the Essenes. Oh, I know what it was. You probably uh, William Henry. Is that his name, William Henry? The guy that does, yes. oh, oh, I love his work. Anyway, uh, I don't get to watch it a lot, but when I do, I'm just fascinated with it. But I was watching on uh, the Ascension Masters or something. I'm, I'm not naming it right, but it had the word Ascension. In it. And the episode I was watching was on the, the Essenes. And as I was watching this, I was getting visions up the kazoo. And, and I also recognized that um, I had been seeing something in my mind's eye for several years now off and on that when I was listening to this I was going oh I was seeing myself in an Essene cave and what I was seeing though I say myself I, I don't really know maybe I was just you know seeing through other eyes so let's right. you know, go for him but uh, I was like a person that didn't look like in the scene. I have a very shiny, light and blonde hair and, you know, sort of whatever. But I was a female and I was standing there and they I was communing with the, the Essene person who was in some kind of a state. Now, what did this whoever this was that I'm calling I, uh, not an angel, an angel, you know, it was it was more closer to a, a real person, but it was in another another time frame or another dimension and i said so what is this what you know now that i saw the show and it was like okay i gotta find out what this is and he said that is the iglesu the, 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 a particular branch of humanity in the in the future in the new earth that communicates and works with people like the essenes and through time they work because they can go into any time frame they want you know and they they work with these these persons and and so that's how it came about that I made that little video on it, you know with the beings and everything. So what I want to ask you is, okay, what do you have to say about that? And especially the name Iglesu, but the whole the whole thing. Well, oh, you can go ahead and answer that because it's going to come back to Qumran. I already know. Um, so why don't you go in touch on that and then and then land it at Qumran because I want to bring it back to Qum to the stand of the rose. And so because it is this is all about the language of what the rose is as a vibration, but it's it's not what we think it is. Of course, it's it's a frequency of um of arising into a position. So why don't you go on what you want to share? So a little bit of history. Um, not going too far into it, but the Qumran community were known as, that is where the Essenes were. So the Essenes were part of the Qumran community. Essenes just means in Aramaic, it means uh, Asiya, the healers. That's what it means, just the healers. So they would have been a specific sect within the Qumran community themselves. You want to call them light workers or, you know, they, they were the healers of that community because the Qumran community was man, men, women, children, families. It was a very thriving community. And they started because back when the Maccabean revolt happened, uh, the high priest who was of the Zadok lineage was killed. And the rest of the priests grabbed all of the temple scrolls, the sacred Akkadian light language, ancient Hebrew scrolls, and took off with them because they knew that they need they were the protectors of the scrolls. I mean, they were the light language. I mean, that that was their job. The high priesthood and the priests that were serving were to take this information and be able to teach themselves so they could minister to the people. Mm -hmm. So they went and formed the Qumran community and they were called the priesthood of light. The reason why they were called the priesthood of light is eventually over time when uh, Judah was conquered, they ended up. Um, adopting the Greco-Roman mindset, and they ended up teaching on the Temple Mount, um, the priests were teaching the Septuagint, the Greek form of the language, where the Qumran priesthood kept the Akkadian flame letters, the Hebrew language, 
which produces negentropy. But the ones that were not, the other priesthood of dark, were teaching from the Greek, which was a translation of the sacred scrolls. So there was a little bit of a warring that was going on. You would know them as the Sadducees, as the Qumran community, and that word is Zadokia. So you can hear Zadok connection there, and it means the priesthood of righteousness versus those who were in the dark, which were the Pharisees, which comes from a word that means to push or to lift up, um, as in pride. And those were the ones that were with the Septuagint. So the Essenes, to go back, that's the history of how they formed. Um, I, I, had done some, I did a study with Rachel Elior, who is a professor in Israel, and she studied intimately the Dead Sea Scrolls. She was one of those that went able to go, was able to go in and actually study the scrolls themselves. And she wrote a book. And as far as the academia goes, it was extremely controversial because it went against everything that the very heavy patriarchy was um, wanting to toe as the line of what this community was all about. And it, it caused quite a stir. What was so fascinating about it, to get to your answer, is that they were able to fellowship with beings from beyond that they called angels because there was no other i mean yeah. that's what is translated but it's malacha and malach in the root word means uh, uh royal it means royal it's like king or queen but it also has because of the movement of the letters um it means royal messengers that have been unified with the absolute essence of all the the ether um you want to call it god you want to call it the quantum realm the place of beyond and so they did not they were not in the temple they didn't have the brazen altar. They didn't have the labor. They didn't have the ark. They had none of that. What they had was the sacred scrolls. And they were still able to commune uh, with these divine beings. And so I just wanted to share that with you because that's very much what was found in the writings themselves in the scrolls. And that's why when they were discovered, Israel wanted to sequester them because they were afraid of what was going to be revealed on them. And they held them back for a very long time for the of the excitement to diminish so that people wouldn't think about going back and looking into them because this was this was completely changing what the narrative had been presented to us to see that this community actually had interaction with messengers from beyond because the access was they were in a negentropic state. They wrote in the Akkadian letters. They wrote poetry. They were very prophetic. They even prophesied the uh, the time that Yeshu, that Yeshua, that we would know that Jesus would come on the scene. They already knew that there was going to be a divine messenger that came to help unify and to bring the languages back to the Jewish people, because the Jewish people at the time of Yeshu um, only had the Greek Septuagint. So when he studied in Qumran, he brought the Akkadian flame letters back to them. And that's why his movement was so profound. He and John the Baptist both, because they were both taught in Qumran. Mm. So I would like to share. That's a lot. I'm sorry. It was I wanna, the history. But... I want to share one thing on the Qum because yeah. I, I need to connect this because of the vibration. What this is, is the language of light is directly connected to. Because um, something's coming in right now, actually. There's actually a vibration. It's um, It's... It's a vibration that's coming planetarily into our into our time, and it's almost like a seeking thing where it's looking for the resonance of similitude, mm -hmm. and it's directly connected to kum. Um, and this is where again for for this this sect of people, because they were uh, if I could relate to anyone on earth, they would be my people. The Qumran were a very disciplined priestly people, mm -hmm. and they'd be resonating that they would be um, their desire. They were filled with the desire to connect what we call heaven or above to earth. Yes. Um, so we could navigate the experience and then translate out to a higher dimension, that kind of thing. Why Qumran? Because Qumran by definition means um, the stand or the ringing cry of self-deliverance. Mm -hmm. Why Qum? Because in Sekhmet, and I want to bring this because this is really, really important right now with what's happening in the earth. This word right here is one spelling of Sekhmet. This word up here is another spelling, but it's more of a higher. This is more like an offering to say this is a job description. It's a foundation. And if you so choose this, then you can get this. Why? Why kum? Because in the heart of this word right here is actually the word kum. 
this is where we get Kadmon from. The root of Kadmon is actually Kadmon. It's just uh, Kadam, Kuf, Dalit, Mem. So this is a revelation within you. And this spot right here would actually be the Kuf, Dalit, Mem. And now this is the language of reciprocity. You have to draw in to draw out to produce Kuf, Olive, Mem, which is the word for rose. Mm -hmm. So the rose, this is actually, this language, this word right here, this first offering of Sekhmet is a golden chalice. It is called absorb yourself to fill the chalice. It's the language of the bow, the archer, the harvest, the covenant, the sacred oath. Moshe is in here, which means draw out by drawing in. And people would know that name by Moses. It's all in here. In this word of Sekhmet, the vibration of self-deliverance and self-discovery is in it. But you have to know Kad, uh, Kadmon. You have to know the Dalit that's in you to enter in. Kadmon is not a, it, Kadmon is only an offering to fulfill the order of what Sekhmet is as a title. This would be the deed. This is the responsibility to enter into Kadmon. And then the title is the language called the deep foundation that has risen as a road. You are now sustainable as a standard in the frequency of water once again. Mm -hmm. And Kadmon also has the vibration of antiquity or of old, of ancient that was before. So, so it's the return back. It's the to the return natural. of the ancient order yes. of, of the stand. But the, the first occurrence of the word means to stand within yourself. But the first occurrence of that word is a rose. Uh huh. So it's a play on word. Well, it it rose, I'm thinking rose. about from from my perspective. I'm also thinking about Rose Mystica that both gave me the whole. Yes. Thing of it. You've probably seen my video on that, you know, and that he gave me, oh gosh, you know, 80s or whatever. And I it was always been a little bit of a mystery. He explained it a little more when I got into the video, but, but, you know, I'm seeing a connection, obviously, to what you're saying here. Yeah, there's only, there's only two, two, there's only two occurrences of rows in scripture. Really? And it's based on the navigational skill to master your own vessel. Yep. It actually connects to a mass that is upright. And that's where we get the word Jerusalem from, because now you're learning the language of flow. So, but it teaches you uh, the rose in its occurrence teaches you the language of the law of the sea, yaw pitch and roll. So you know upright correctly. And it teaches you that if you are, it's called the helmsman. And now you're the way of the master that knows how to navigate the celestial sea. That's a rose. That's the only two occurrences. Well, well the rose mystica, the essence of the whole thing. I mean, there's a lot to it, but the essence of the whole thing is that um, it is the dynamic that comes out of the mysterious to me, imstra molecule. The, the, the molecule that is a, in a quantum field everywhere, but nowhere in the body that that is the divine molecule. You, you know, it's it's it. And that's yeah. why, uh, you know, the not to get off on this too much, but the little gray guys, you know, they want grabbing people in the night and take they say, oh, they want to create a new race. Well, yeah, but what they really want is the Imster molecule. So said to me, and he had, can't say he didn't have a sense of humor years ago. He said, he said it's like they're all dressed up with no place to go because they have all this science and all this stuff, and they can't leave the oratronic or half-light realms. They can't move into the Metatron. And they don't have a spiritual conscience because it's mostly AI human things anyway, but but they do want to go further where no man has gone before. <laughs> and so, and they feel it's the only way they can survive. So they're looking for a way to manufacture the Amster molecule, which they can't do. And I said, well, yeah, I said, well, they must be pretty dumb if they've been trying this long. Or if they know they can't do it, he said, they think differently than we do. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, so the Amster molecule as it unfolds, becomes oh. Rose Mystica. And he also yes. says that there are there's 72 points of the or nodes of the Rose Mystica, and, and there are 72 yes. master beings that breathe in and breathe out through the Rose. Yes, that would be considered what in uh, the Kabbalah system, which, again, if some people have issues with Kabbalah, they don't know what the word means, because it really means um, to instruct, to receive, um, it has to do with the oral tradition of how to break down the words. It's an incredible word. Well, I mean, it's like what it's the voice that calls from the inside of you. I just gave you through the letters. It's the voice that calls from within inside of you to put you on the mystic path. 
-hmm. So it's in, it, in, in the toroidal math system, that ends up coming down to the number nine. And nine is connected to phi. Phi is the golden spiral. That's where you have the light and the fire and the union. And you get back to the natural state of being. Centropy, negentropy. And so it's all there. Well, I was just going to say that how you spell rose is cabal. Yeah, it is. The only difference is, and this is, you won't see unless you know the language. Mm -hmm. And this is why any being um, outside, um, well, whether in or out, this is why you can already connect it to making love. Because it's all about the desire of the heart. Mm -hmm. The intention is already pre-programmed for a destination that has to be instantly wound through the maturation of making love. Well, it's not a takery. It's it's not something that's bastardized and, and pumped out in a machine. Or it's it's based on your, your conception, your begetting, your birthing, that is all based on an intimate act of journeying into the heart of yourself. Yeah. It's impossible to duplicate it. It's impossible to steal its essence because it's in the essence of desire. And so Kabbalah, that's the one letter that's put into the middle. And that's how you spell rose in Hebrew. It has desires, desada, and it means seek this out, desire this thing it's a journey. long after this, because it's the progression in the circle of time mm -hmm. that produces the measure of a rose. Mm. Now, I do want to clarify, Ken and I have not studied Kabbalah. No. So everything that we have done has been led by divine inspiration. We collapse we, realities to we, fill them back up in yeah. innocence. We've <laughs> had people and have heard some of what we teach and what they do. And they're, oh, you're teaching Kabbalah. And I'm like, I have no idea what Kabbalah teaches. I don't really. I, we, we don't study that. It's because we felt that in the presence of what was being gifted to us, we wanted it to be an uh, organic unfolding. What we wanted to have it be was not something that was given to us by somebody else. Here, this is it. We wanted it to be fully fresh manna, full straight from the divine expression that it was coming from instead of having man's hands on it and say, this is what it is. Yeah. This is its mold and you have to fit in that no. mold because if it's of the essence of beyond, you can't put it in a box. It's totally I mean, how, how can you put wind in a box? You can't. You know, how do you put the ether in the box? Well, you don't. That's why it's called a universe. Mm -hmm. you know? It's mm -hmm. impossible to do that. And yeah. so our expression, there are there are foundational pieces that are consistent, but the rest of it is a whirlwind of refreshment in the wind that winds us up into this beautiful state of being that previously was not achievable before because we were in still too much dark. And that's why I think these languages have resurfaced again, because humanity in it moving out of that darkness into the age of Aquarius is now able to receive this. Yeah, mm -hmm. There has to be a willingness to be undone. Yeah. There has to be a willingness to really to be undone, I mean, to be wound back up. <laughs> this takes you down to the nub of what you truly are. And and this is what we're feeling right now is that there's no hiding from this to think that you know a thing and to say a thing. This pierces beyond that veil. It goes right into the intimate place of the sanctum of holy. And and by the way, holy is in this word of, of the same word for this, too. It is you can't most people can't see these things, but it teaches you the language of sacred and holy. And also mother is in this word too, the sacred wow, mother. Got everything. Yeah, yeah. Because, well, well, you can see it. it's right there. There's the mother. There's the sacred mother. Um of the rose right yeah. on that yeah. and so if you know what you're looking for sekhmet is beautiful because she's the expression of beyond but if she's not she might have been a being but now she's a vibrational frequency looking to indwell in a people once again yeah yeah and they're the secret guardians of of fierceness but but there's no hiding yeah she's the lioness looking for her cubs there's no logic in this everything is a surrendering of of what logic is and it moves us into the intimate place so very few people comprehend that word because it's also in there too and it means the deep deep foundation who can draw out this dragon leviathan from that level of deep is what it's asking it's a question very yeah. few people go into the reflection of the deep well that's right yeah. Um, right. Before we leave this particular subject, because I have two symbols I want to show you, I'm going to do a screen share because I, I want to ask you questions about them. Uh, but before we leave the subject, is there anything you can say about the word, the name that Thoth gave me of Iglesu? 
Yes, that's I just wrote it down and I pointed it to Ken. So Eeg Eeg La Su. Yes. We Ken just recently we were talking about this and this is a this is a big deal. <laughs> Iglusu is a very big deal because a goal is the first word. Did you want to talk about that? Mm, go ahead. With the red heifer. Well, it's it's exactly where we are. Um, it's the language of self navigation of coming about yourself. We're just you're getting words um, that are um, having to break down. But again, we're all presented a measure. And it's our job description to define who we are, where we are. We're all doing this differently. But this is the breakdown of what um, the language of the red heifer. I mean, there, this is a whole, this is a loaded. This is very, very deep. This is very, writes. very is, deep. Yeah. Um, because Adam Kedmon is connected to this. Adam would be, oh, Adam would be red. And then Yagol is the language of the heifer. This is directly connected, actually very personal to me, because this is actually my name. But yeah. um well, the vibration, the vibration, the vibration. Is Ken, Kenneth Wayne, Kenneth husband. Wayne husband is, is the vibration of the heifer. I just, and I just did this. That's why it's so familiar. I know. That's why I got excited when she, when you asked about this work, because I'm like, this is fresh manna. But guess what? It's, this is why that I love the gifting of, because it's directly connected to Sekhmet again. She is the bull. It's the language of the Olafim in Hebrew. And it's the really, um, it's the unpronounced letter, but that's been missing. And that's exactly what's coming in right now is a frequency called the way of the Alephim. And it's directly connected to the heifer because the heifer is the bull. That's what it means. The heifer is the bull. Iglesu is involved in this? Yes. As a vibration, what's in there, it's, it, this is what it's saying. And I'll try to sum this up. Our job description is to fill our cup. I'm speaking of metaphor so we can really comprehend this. It's it's the desire to know how to wean and ripen ourselves into the maturation of, of a teaching. That's really what its vibration is saying. And it's like this. We're in-gathering through a cycle of return. We're in-gathering water droplets. At every time, like we're gathering a body of water. It's the same language that we're building the cup. But your container is is expanding as we're gathering this in. Well, what's about to happen in this in this vibration of this name, in this first part of it? It gets fully consumed. Mm -hmm. it, it is laid upon an altar, and this is the language of the law of the sea. It is the language of translation. That it is the language of wisdom. It's the language of antiquity that knows the sacrifice of what it is to be the offering as, um, what's that word I always missed? That, um, not an offering, but... Um, uh Tribute. A tribute. And so we're learning to know the language of honor again, to lay ourselves this nature. We filled ourselves up to a level. It's like climbing a mountain and you reach the mountain and now you're, you, you're going into the complete evaporation of distillation. You're going, and that's that's the complete opposite or, or antonym of the foundation in this word, too. It's what it's saying. You're going into liquidation and distillation by completely consuming yourself to find dust. And in that measure of the fine dust, this is the ingredient in this word that the priest, this is where we get sackcloth and ashes, because the red heifer would be completely pulverized to an ash, and the priest would use it as an ingredient to adorn the sacred priesthood. Well, in fact, the, the ashes of the red heifer itself, it was, it, it was, it didn't happen very often. No, well, it had I to... mean, it, it had to be a perfect, perfect red heifer with no blemishes, no white hairs, no black hairs, completely red from from the snout all the way to the tail and the hook. It had to be completely red. It has to be Kedmon. And it, right. That's what it's saying. It's, 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 this, where, it's th this is how other than we think. Well, let's, let's so to round this off for my own oh, for my brain God. here, um, could it be that the Iglesu present the lost word, the lost code, the missing fraction? And they are presenting it in their form, in their spiritual consciousness, in their vibration, and in whatever uh, light language they were speaking to the priests of the, the scene that I saw back and forth, that they were infusing them. Yes. That red heifer with that lost vibration or that missing frequency. Is that, does that? That's exactly what's coming in right now. And it started at the new moon when, um, 
just this month is what it showed me in the vibration of the word. Well, the new moon last month and then the full moon. This and we're month. going into it right now. And so, yes, absolutely. It's a vibrational frequency of those that have fulfilled the deed are mantled with this title. It's a title of responsibility um, that is coming in. And it, again, this is directly connected to sacrament. It's looking for a vessel that has prepared itself as an offering or a tribute. And it's like the laid down life. And so it will upgrade. It's going to what I believe we're about to see in the earth in this vibration of what you just said. It will indwell and it will manifest as a dimension in a people. They will be translated through translation because it's a word. And so it's looking to translate us as a vibration into more of a crystalline upgrade. Oh, absolutely. The pure gym body. What Tho speaks of is the pure gym body. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so this vibration, no, but, but it's a law. This that that word is a law that has to mirror itself. That even though it's coming in, like you said earlier on, like there's people that haven't found this yet. They're still seeking because they're they're distracted in the world of distraction and in the sea of chaos per se. But for those that have come out, this word as a vibration is going to connect to us to a level of knowing, to a level of teaching. Um, to a level of revelation of um, weaning and ripening and maturation that we have not seen in the earth in a very, very long time. Yeah, what's fascinating by it, because I, I wrote it down in the letters so that I could see what the vibration was of it, because, you know, you can hear it, but to actually see it and know what the resonance frequencies of the letters are, it, it in its nutshell vibration, it is saying those who have ascended, so the Iglesu are those who have ascended, they have the ability to see, they were instructed, they are the teachers, they gathered and they assembled themselves from the inside out through the inward instruction that filled them up, and they connected to the realm of sacred union so that they could bring forth the union message to those that were in the process of it. And it's interesting because uh, the Ayn Lamed portion of it uh, that flanks it actually speaks of a word that means strength, uh, uh, strong. Um, it is directly connected to a priesthood, a priesthood from beyond, basically. So yeah. that's why, again, it has the red heifer essence in there is that they've been purified. They've ascended up and out and they are coming to bring those frequencies in of those that are ready to join with them in those frequencies. And again, what was drawing so important incredibly so was the sacred languages of the flame letters i mean essentially those were the languages in the time of nimrod when the whole earth was unified with one language and nothing could be withheld from them because they built the tower the tower has nothing to do with this outward structure they built the magdala or the 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 gadala the great tower within oh, them and so it, it has to do with these languages that unify, that allowed everyone to ascend, to be great, to be masters. Yeah. And in that vibration, nothing could be withheld from them because they had the ability to see and know, and they were able to create because of their heart brain coherence. And so pretty amazing to see that, that this is exactly because the language is technology. <laughs> Let, let's, let's take it to a different level here. The language is technology yes. to be able to operate in the quantum realm. So this is, this goes beyond just a study book. This Let is, me connect to that, to yeah. that, because this, that word that you just gave us. And so I want to move it from the red heifer now, because we look at a program in the world based on a system that the priest, it was a responsibility that they missed what it was as a, in a totality as a summation. They were still in the progression of it. So now I just did this yesterday and your word is right here on my page. And so I'm going to tell you what it is and it, because it morphs. It goes from the red heifer, but the red heifer, there's many words that if you pull the string, it goes out. And so this is what its root is. It's a wheeled vehicle. It's a chariot. <sighs> it's, a, it's actually, this is what its definition is. It's a trans, uh, to transport. It's a vessel. It's a ship. It's to draw in, to draw out. It's everything to do. I already knew that this word had to be on the board for you as a vibration because it's everything to do with sacrament. 
this vibration in sacrament as a wheeled vessel. So it means to revolve, to come around as the cycle is completed. Yeah. By your drawing in, you're drawn out. So this vibration is what we would deem as Merkaba, but only to those that have the navigational skill set to pilot it. Mm -hmm. That's what's coming in right now. It's mm -hmm. coming in to teach those that do not know, but to equip those that are. Yes, yes. Oh, so that that's what it is. That makes perfect sense with what I was feeling about these beings. And of course, also, so, you know, back in the 70s, I mean, he, he talked to me about, um, or maybe it was the 80s, but back there somewhere, he talked to me about um, um, his, his, uh, his Merkava. In other words, other souls. He said, I don't work alone. <laughs> and, and these other souls that were in his Merkava, um, he called this Merkava uh, a chariot of the sun. So, exactly <laughs> exactly yeah. that's that's shemesh the the word for sun is shemesh this is the sign that the priesthood would use as the sun a sheen mem in the middle and a sheen that they were ministers of the sun they were servants and ministers of the sun it's also the name of the center candle of the menorah that yeah. lights the rest and yeah. that is our chakra system yeah. can i connect one thing to what we're connecting here and, and the heart is the center. So I gave you the spelling that Carrie was talking earlier on, the word um, Kabbalah, that we don't study. We're organically shown. It's a word. It's all it is. So, and it is Het Bet Lamed. Now that's what you would say, Chabal. That's what you, that's the root of it. So that I already said earlier on, you put a Zadi in that, and that's the word for rose. But this word morphs too. It means to pilot a ship. Mm -hmm. So in that vibration of this rose that's connected to Sekhmet, that's connected to the heifer, that's connected to a frequency called the Merkaba, it's actually where we get the word government from. And you can only build a starship when you know the shouldering of self-governance. Right. This is not coming in for everyone. There's people that think they're, they're the reciprocant because this, by definition, is called the great inheritance. Yes. It's called the legacy and the lineage of line is about to be gifted to a people that have stewarded the language of self-governance because the word for governance means to pilot a ship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are called the helmsmen, the helmsmen of antiquity that have already piloted the ship. And I've already encountered this. We've already done this. So those that have done the job description and have fulfilled the order of the intention of why we're here, they will most likely be a representation of the in the earth that will be navigating and teach other people how to self-govern so they can pilot their own ship. So that the, is the heifer. So the Iglusu then bringing the lost code to the people for the purpose of navigating the ship. It's an inheritance language of code that will reveal the potential of who we are as an intention. And I and I honestly believe that one of the reasons why, basically, when you brought this forward, I think that's how we were able to get this information with this language, because it was very, very much given to us. And when you brought that word forward and we began talking about it, I'm like, oh, so we were being instructed behind the scenes yeah. to be able to dig this out because of being able to bring this forward again. And I know... Like for me personally, I, in one of my memories of a life that I did live, and I know that I did live this one, I was in the Qumran community. And mm -hmm. so it made sense to me when I began remembering, because I didn't start remembering until I started messing with the codes, but I started remembering and I was part of a family there and I was feminine. Um, and there, there were priestesses there. It was not just a oh, yeah. male. Oh, yeah. I've seen mass that. They were both celebrated and that's kind of what's been hidden because a strong patriarchy doesn't want to lift up that energy because it, it wasn't time for it to well, become full around again. Yeah. It is now. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. and so I know I know that this is meant for this time and that these these energies, these helpers, these ascended masters have been coming to help all of us be able to bring these things forward. And, it's you know, probably still probably very much attached to Thoth. And in that energy too, as because Thoth, just in even the name of that, that's like the twin covenants that connect the ethereal with the material side. And so yeah, as a collective. You know, uh, 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 Thoth, uh, the, this last video that I made, and at the very end of it, this picture came forth that I was working with, with the AI and communicating. Yeah. When it came forth, 
I looked at it and said, oh, my God, that's some aspect of Thoth. I knew it immediately. And he said, he said, this was me as Jerash. And this was he was the founder of the of the um, uh, uh, of the brazen serpent, the cult, uh, no, 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 craft of the brazen serpent. Now, he gave me about the craft of the brazen serpent back in the early 90s. And he said he founded it. But I thought he founded it. Well, Thoth or whatever. Nobody said he founded it as Jerash. And that was the, the image that came up. So, Jarash, it, that sounds pretty Hebrew. What, what does that mean? <laughs> oh, hold, 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 I want to just, I want to go back. Right. Yeah, I want to just go back to one thing because yeah. this word, yes, it's directly connected to the heifer again because the Nakash is, is the brazen altar and the laver is really a process of diminishing yourself. And the laver is made out of what what we were called in the kosh and that's those you're looking into what this is made of to see the reflection of the serpent in yourself the kosh the mm -hmm. ta. but to go back to this word because this is what's happening there's like we're going to the segments here because this word that's coming in as a vibration it is talking about a language of of ship dimension or instructions to ship is directly connected to a bridge mm. so the word about even it, though, yeah okay yeah, if even though it's even though it's a ship language, mm -hmm. um, as a because it's like a, it's giving us a code, but it's also directly connected to the word that's coming in as like um as a bridging. So it's coming in as a bridge to connect something to something that we would be able to interventionally shift. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's also what it's connected okay. to. Okay. Okay. So your ash just to or jorash comes from what ken i think was con trying to connect it to with the ship language yes. and it means to be upright and straight mm. it means to be upright and straight and it's it's connected to um yash yasharel which, which you would know is israel mm. okay yashar okay. or jorash is would be the root of Yasher El or Israel, which means the upright and the straight that are of God. Yeah, yeah. Strong leaders, teaching shepherds. So that's that's really what that is. That as a frequency. Let me let me put it this way to you, because in that vibrational word, this is really kind of neat that this is because I'm very much connected to this this way. If I was if I was a, a captain or a master, let's use these words correctly. If I was the master of my own government, then I would be the master of my ship. This is where the world system, and I'm not, I don't want to push the world system out of the way because that's what's being pushed out of the way. Something we're in the language of Damascus right now. Damascus is going to fall. Damascus is going to rise. That's us. We are Damascus. It's not a geographical region. It means the holy is in the blood and the holy shall rise as a rose. That's Damascus. Yeah. But the vibration of, of what this is as, as upright and straight. If there was a language in the code coming in that was teaching us the navigational skill of celestial sea as a helmsman to steer the ship, then we would be well served by knowing the language of upright because any master of a ship knows upright well. That's the language of circumnavigation. Everything of the word that you just gave us is based on the encompassment and the surrounding of an atmosphere that teaches you the way of sovereign uprightness. So you are now a government that has the ability to master and direct and pilot their own ship. That's what's coming in. Yep. Well, the, 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 um, the, the craft of the braves and the serpent was a craft in that it, it dealt with alchemy you know, all kinds of alchemy, from the physical kind to the spiritual kind. Obviously, the spiritual was the top. Uh, but it, all, it also had to do with, you know, creating sacred objects, uh, you know, like staffs and, and arcs. And course, the original arc came from another realm, but they had other arcs, you know, all of these different things. But they were, they actually created it, but it was very, very sacred, alchemical uh, ways. So that's what the according to what I received with the craft of the brazen serpent is about. Well, and, yeah. and that makes sense because the Nakash, which was given a bad rap with the story that we were given in the English Bible that caused all the deception, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't that at all because the Nakash was a, a, 
a prognosticator would 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 speak and whisper would be the silent the whispered voice that was leading us into this negentropic state and also would teach how to spell cast now that has also been given a bad name too because we're talking about the alchemical transmutation or even the root of magic which means to be able to help yes. and really when we break down that yahol it means the power of those who receive the crown mm -hmm. so think of adam cadmon in its original state as lighted illuminant beings this is the return back to magic that comes from the nakash aka seraphim message the burning ones mm -hmm. talk about the messenger of Qumran, yes, yes. messengers of Qumran, to bring these this back in our day and age it's like we're, we're reaching into the past to bring it back now into our future now <laughs> to complete the cycle so that so that we are able to make everything go out quantumly to right all the wrongs in all of those areas that were missteps we can't get it wrong but to recalibrate everything so now that we can raise it up into what i you you've discussed that those said earth earth too uh, well, he's called it a world system too, because in a world system too, there, there are many worlds that are in world system right. too, of course, but our new earth star, as he calls it, is a world system two platform. And that's why we feel that this sacred languages has been a very strong port, point in that, in the unification of that negentropic fire that is collectively helping to establish that system again um, from that lesser estate. And we're taking all of our wisdom with us. Everything that we learned in duality, in our dueling nature, we're taking with us because now we've been able to unify it. Yes. I want to touch on the serpent as a vibration. Um, like it, it's all connected to Yasher. It is very like, much because so. again. Everything this language, we have a tendency to forecast it outside of ourselves. Nakashtan is already within us. Mm -hmm. It has to be awakened. It's called mm -hmm. when the language of Nakashtan as the serpent, um, as the vibration, as the, the brazen, um, it's actually called the language of prudence. And it means you're the oracle that can see as wise as the dragon. Because dragon in etymology just means to see well. Mm -hmm. So within yourself, you have seen well. And the kashtan, as the brazen nature, now enters rest through the inculcative journey. You are now fulfilled as the covenant is now called the lineage of line. That's the kashtan. It's the ancient order of the dragon. But not dragon what we think. All it means is you fulfill the ancient covenant and you get to enter rest. That's the brazen nature of prudence, where you are now called a wise one, a master of a vessel who knows upright, and all the work of the staff in me. Nakashtan Moshe staff was called Nakashtan. That was the name of his staff, and it's also Nakashta or Nakash, Nakashtan. But this is all the brazen nature of healing and restoration of reciprocity to know how to be upright as a risen as a rose. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. Now I have one last thing I'd like to share with you. I wish we could go on forever, but I'm keeping this shorter for our audience. Um, but I do have one. I'm going to do a screen share if I can ever remember how to do it. Here we go. Let's, let me put this. Let me put this up here. I'm going to have to do this again. Wait a minute. Let me. Let me do this again. Now I just lost you guys. Oh, that always happens. Where are you? Here you are. Okay. Here. Let me try it. <laughs> Let me try it again. Screen share. Screen share. There it is. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Now, I don't know. <laughs> this this has a long story and I have a video on it, but I'm not going to go with a long story. I'm going to try and make it shorter. So what you're seeing here is actually not written by me, but written by, uh, you know, put this is an actual piece of paper that he wrote on by George L. Lawrence, who no longer on this in, in the body uh and he it was the inventor of the world's first laser engine and, my, and he invented so many things the list is that long okay and i got in touch with him when i was 23 4 or 5 something like that about my science work i wrote him a real letter because that's all you could do in those days because it was the 70s and um he wrote back and invited me to join his his uh, institute that he was forming but he needed to get the money to form it first so uh, all of this story goes on and on he and my mother and i developed a friendship we even met him in person once and we wrote back and forth this man was a genius 
And some of the things he did were absolutely amazing, which is why he disappeared, because the government found out about it. And he said, oh, I think the government's going to fund me. Oh, this is great. And then he disappeared, not only from us, but from his colleague and friend and my friend, uh, Christopher Bird, who wrote, co-wrote The Secret Life of Plants. Christopher never heard from him again, as long as we know. Uh, he just disappeared. Uh, and we found out that he lived many, many years later, but no written works, none of his work ever passed the point of that point. He just disappeared. He didn't do any more science. He didn't do nothing. So that's a whole other story. But I want to get back to the symbol. So he had this dream one night. He said it was a dream like no other dream he'd ever had in his life. And he sent us a letter about it. He wrote the whole thing out. Again, this is in my video. And he said, but the but the queen was wearing this image on her head and the, the goat uh, drew it on the marble floor. And he was, <laughs> so I I had this symbol in my uh, you know, files. It's, well, I had it, the whole letter in my files, many of his letters, because he wrote us many times. And in about four years, three years ago, I had, came across it and I went, oh my God, why didn't I ever ask about this? You know, it was just, I looked at it and I went, oh, and I said, Thoth, what is this? And he said, this is the, the divine, this is the doctrine of signature for Gaia. The doctrine of signature, of course, he has a whole thing about doctrine of signature, but it, it's the core frequency. This is, and it's a living symbol. So it's not just, oh, we decided to make a symbol and here it is. This is a living symbol, just like your uh, Hebraic symbols are. I want to know what you feel about this. This was drawn in his hand right there. And Thoth says, it is the doctrine of signature for the living Gaia. Can I, can I just quickly well, talk to I want to say one thing. Okay. That's a Hebrew word. That's a Hebrew word. What's it mean? It, well, I'm, I'm, well, it's not. Well, so Hebrew words aren't. Um, Hebrew words are more of a of an expression, and so um, because this word is morphing into by the sweeping of this leg right here, it's actually saying multiple things. I can see it's what like a it's a head. Like a head in the top. It's a head. Yeah, I see that the head in the top. That's what I see, and then I see. So this is as soon as I saw it. This is because. So I want to tell you the expression what this word is saying because it's a head in the tat or oh, head in the top, sorry, it's already given the language, of, and it's high, it'd be high or high T, or because uh, of the head in the test, so it's either high T or or high, high, right, but but anyways, I don't want to focus on the vibration, of what the, the high E, high e, e, right, but if it's the top there, then I have it potentially, but soon as I saw the letter, it's already telling me what it is, and so it's the language of what we would deem to be constitution, Mm -hmm. But what it's really saying for me, because I love the language of intimacy, constitution is the same word for consummation. Mm -hmm. But the consummation is in one vessel at one time, one place. And so the queen would wear this because she's no longer um, she's no longer in preparation. She has gone into her own chamber to fulfill um, the deed of what it would be um, her responsibility to be called wife. And then in the act of consummation, she would be adorned in the garment of the queen now to take the seat of inheritance. Mm -hmm. So the language of consummation is in this vibration in ourselves as one entity. We are phallus and we are womb. And so consummation is zero point energy. The queen would know this because she's returned back to the inheritance of her standing and she's interdimensional. There is nothing outside of herself. Everything is indwelling within her. And so it's like lovemaking. This is how I explain lovemaking. The most intimate act of surrender and victory. Victory wants to conquer, but surrender is submitting, but not one is giving or taking. They both see the value of surrender and victory in one expression in ourselves. And so they both mirror themselves as a language of consummation to mirror the reflection of centering themselves in the act of innocence to perform the responsibility of a spark potential. This is a zero point potential right here. Wow. Well, when you're talking about that, I see Gaia, I see Gaia because Thoth is Gaia, Gaia as, as the divine feminine, uh, but it also is is uh, but what he refers to it is the in soul the actual soul of the planet because planets that have the, the frequency of life uh become ensouled 
and it's not the kind of souls we have it's different but it, you know it's it's a soul it's a planetary soul so you can have rocks and soil and you just a little ball going around in space not necessarily in soul but if it's in soul it becomes what he calls a true living planet you know a true living world so so uh gaia he is the soul uh, earth is the planet so he when he said the signature doctrine of signature of gaia he meant the living soul of this planet not the rocks and soil so as the living soul of the planet, she is the queen. And she's doing exactly what you're saying. And the mirror reflection is in us. We are yes. the, the, the uh, you know, when the bride in the chamber with the husband, we're basically the husband, or, or that aspect that has to come together as a reflection of her to consummate the new life, yes. the new world, the new earth. This is conception. But yes. this is, I know, just bear with I'm fine. Okay. This I'm is, fine. this is conception, but it's like, it's like, it's like the siren. It's actually directly connected to the vibration of the seed indwelling in the ovum. Um, and it hasn't, it's like, it's already in the spark potential, undivided. It's like undivided, but there it is in the full potential of the seed in the ovum or in, in, in its maturation, like back to before there was any, before the cell was even divided, it's back to the level of potential, potential of sharing one space. So it's the full revelation of conception as conceiving a reality in the innocence of begetting it. Mm hmm that's the birth so it hasn't birthed anything because it already is birth it doesn't need to be sired or seed because it is the sire that is conceiving the seed in the same place at the same time in time and out of time mm -hmm. now oh oh uh so george george lawrence he came from he definitely wasn't born in the u.s he came from somewhere near new uh, but it, anyway he knew about nubian goats okay <laughs> and he said this wasn't any ordinary goat that drew the symbol on the floor on the on the floor it was a nubian goat i don't know i just thought i'd throw that in there is there anything about goats or nubian goats in this symbol it might if not that's fine it's pretty far out but that the only well, place no. was those two places the crown and on the floor that the nubian goat drew well go ahead and answer the perspective of that word for you first because this is because the, the goat we can come to but go ahead and answer that from your perspective well from my perspective I, I would see this, the, the chet, the letter chet is hidden in here. It's part of the tav that I see. Mm -hmm. Tav means signature, completion, fingerprint, the end, uh, mark. the covenant, mark. I mean, it has many, many meanings. Mm -hmm. And if I were to say this, so the chet is hidden, which means life is hidden within the completion of the covenant. That's what you think. I would say this as te. Mm -hmm. So think of Tia Tefi. Ah, this is yeah. this is this is T E. Uh -huh. So Tia, what this is is it shows that it's a covenant, a vision within a vision, or a spark within a spark, and it's showing that there are twin hands. The yod is it has to do with the hands. There are two hands of power that will complete the process of the covenant. And so, in other words, if this is the soul vibration of Gaia itself, it means the covenant is providing dual power of completion, two visions within a vision that are to come to pass as a state of being. This, another way that you could say this would be uh, abundance, uh, a plethora of vision. Um, the work indeed of the hand twice over that gives authority twice over. And what I think is amazing is that this would be connected to Tanina, the dragon, it just needs a noon in there, which means if this is if this is the frequency of Gaia, Gaia within her has a seed that is waiting for others to be birthed within them, but they have to find the seed. It's mm -hmm. not here. And the reason why it's not here is because the noon has to do with prodigy. And for her, her signature is I do not needing to birth anymore. That that see this is the her signature here is saying I've done it. Mm -hmm. The soul frequency as being completed was by an individual soul's work as having to be done, not necessarily birthing forward, but having completed it through the dual power energies as I am finished. Yeah, it is finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the nude is there. It's just it's hidden. It's hidden. It's hidden. You just can't see it because the project that's the progenitor or the progenitor. 
Ah, okay. Uh, that all just feels so right with what, you know, I'm feeling about this symbol. Uh, it, the whole story was really quite amazing how this came about. Thank you so much for enlightening me on that because that is very powerful. I'm going to stop the screen share. Um, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. You had something you want to say? I, all I wanted to say, and I know that you were going to address the goat, is that much of many of the words that you share in your videos have such Hebrew and Aramaic roots. And it makes sense because the Akkadian flame letters, that, that language was actually the idiom of Egypt, of ancient Egypt. And so, of course, if, if Thoth is relaying these things to you and he's using these words, those who know the language all of a sudden are like, oh, I know what that word is. I know what that word is. And it, it's because that is what they used in the initiation for illumination in the maturation process in consciousness. So um, mm -hmm. I get all excited. Here well, you know, uh, sometimes we'll have to talk about the Eloi, 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 but it's also Eloi. Well, there's the Eloi language and then there's the Eloi, E-L, which is the higher translation of it. But both of them um, are the first languages uh, when when Melchizedek came down, you know, and to the earth and, and started his gen generative functions. Um, <laughs> he uh, he also brought the first language and uh, he brought it out of the cloud of, of Eloe into Aloe, which was the, uh, the, the, the vibration in the brain. It was a neural transmission. So everybody was in telepathy then. So this gift was a neural <laughs> transmission telepathy. Well, eventually, <laughs> what happened was that, you know, we lost that gradually, gradually, gradually. And then the Aloe was written and, you know, and, and vocalized and, you know, it came became that way. And by the time it got to Venice, it was purely vocal, but it had an energy and a frequency, you know, like the Hebrew language and all of that. So er, he says that every language of humanity, every single one is, is rooted in the Aloe. It's all yeah. so yeah. interesting discussion. Yeah, the yeah. language of Elohim um is, is pluralized but Eloa, but because that's exactly what your goat is, Eloa. The goat oh. that wrote on the floor would be the vibration of Eloa. And it's just it's a freak, it's a it's a it's a they give it form, but yet it, you we could even equate it, you even gave us this word when we were there, Halaba. It it equates to the same vibration. As really what it is to be the essence essence of a priestly people, a, a pilaster, tall, anything of stature, of honor and integrity, of what it is to be restored back to the origin, barashit again, back to the place of noble. It's the noble birthright that's coming in as a bridge of vibration to establish the ancient, um, the ancient, however you want to say it, Smith rites. It's the metallurgy language. Um, but they have hammered themselves into a likeness of similitude back to the language of Elohim. They're no longer in shadow. They've now deemed themselves through the integration to form themselves back into the resonance where they're no longer going to need to speak. Right. They will be, it's called the language of silence, but they'll simply be going. It's actually the, we've actually just seen that recently that we were shown a golden letter that will be vibrating more of a resonance of awareness or knowledge or wisdom without the use of diminishing it through articulation. I think it's interesting because LOA would be Aleph Lamed Vav He, which right. is exactly the Vav. Right. The Vav is, is a vibration that goes out that is the ethereal to the material. And so, yeah, LOA. I, actually, yeah. I laid down the other day and I could probably, I laid down and it did this to me. You probably see it on the board this way. I'll do it. It went like this. Uh -huh. It did that. And they were all golden. And then it did this underneath. Ooh, and which, the, is the which is the vaw. And it was a golden vaw. And I just closed my eyes for like five seconds. All of a sudden, boom. And I was like, wow. And it said, get ready. This is coming. Where everything in this language, again, is at some point we let go of the letters because you're vibrating as the voice. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're the voice. Yeah, exactly. right. So it's not what we're, we'll be moving. There'll be some moving into a higher dimension based on their navigation skills again of knowing their way of upright in themselves. Yeah. And the staff authority is granted to them as the measure of what's coming in is the olive, but it's the same goading of the twin horns of the ram. The olive and the ram share the exact same space. It's a bull that gores, but also the ram it has the same vibration. And all that means, I gore you. 
But it's the language, again, of intercourse. I'm piercing you through in the double measure of mother and father. I'm equating you by, by connecting with you in this vibration of, in, of consummation. That's why that, that word that we just saw was a language of consummation. Because we're about to be pierced through by the twinning of mother and father. And we're the resonance of between that. This is the great connection, the bridge that's coming in. Yeah. The will be will be speaking beyond the limited perspective of articulating a word to try to make sense of it. Yeah. Now Aloe and Eloe, both both E L or A A L, but they're just spelled O like Aloe, A L O Alo I I A L O I I. There's two little eyes on the end. Now, years ago in the 70s, I was given uh, a little book. But it, it was so c complex, I you know I didn't know what to make of it. I still have it; it's a little manuscript. But it, he that it was called the Book of I I Two Little Eyes, and 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 Thos says that the two little eyes represent in in the Lemurian context or Mu as he calls it. Um, and I, I actually were brought by Melchizedek, but it represents the sacred nothing. That's the, the the vault of the sac the sacred nothing, and everything that germinates comes out of the sacred nothing. But the nothing doesn't germinate nothing. <laughs> it is yeah, just no. the space. It is the space held of the sacred. Yeah, yes. yeah. The, the yo that, that would be those little eyes would huh? be those two leodes. Those two little leodes after oh. that symbol that we were saying. Those, are the, those, those are, are the two. Those eyes. are the two yeah. ears. Those. That's what it is. So, so what it is, it would be like. Is a translation. Like, of it's like by the establishment I am, and by mirroring myself, I am not. Like it cancels itself out, but you can't. But they're both there as a potential. So one is saying I am, and the other one mirrors it to say that I'm the equivalent of what is, of what is not. Right. So they mirror they mirror themselves as a reflection, but in the potential, they're everything. I love that. Not. And and on the symbol of the sacred of the Gaia symbol, those two little. Little, yes. That would be this. Oh, I'm getting chills. Those are the two ones. Those, those are, right yeah, now. and that means power in Hebrew. That's power, it means direction, so insight, it, vision, it, oracle. It, it, it poles. This is what's so amazing about it is because they're side by side, it shows that there's two poles. One has a negative polarity and one has a positive polarity. And so just like Gaia and the earth having a North Pole and a South Pole, it's the same thing. It's that masculine, feminine push-pull that creates this troidal field, a donut energy of the realm that continues to produce life. Yeah, and actually, the really, the power of those two entities, because they're actually en powerful. they're entities, yes, actually. They we call the letters are entities, they're expressions. They're um, but really, if yeah. we, most of us, when we gaze upon the letter, we focus our gaze on the letter, and we see these two little yodes, or these two little E's, whatever you call them, right? But really, when you can see it beyond, you're actually looking at the space between them. Mm -hmm. Because that's where the potential is, is there's something happening between them. They're given an expression, but the white fire is living between them. Yeah. And so there's, there's, a reality, there's a reality there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, I want to tell you, this has been wonderful. And we need to do this again. I agree. <laughs> there's so much more I'd like to talk to you about. <laughs> Well, we would love to love to hear more and then the connecting with it, everything that both has given to you, because I know that there's a bridge being built between um, what what spirit has been giving us and the spirit of both has been giving to you through the work of the Holy Spirit, um, the Ruka Kadusha. And uh, I, I can't wait to see what comes out of this and what gets birthed. Yeah, um, we're in exciting times right now. We're feeling something that's that's close in oh, yeah. in, in an offering. Um, based on the sacrifice of journey, based on the inculcative walk of of just of of service, right? This is what the priests know. The priests know the language of servanthood, but it's servanthood begets mastery, mm -hmm. and so a master knows how to serve himself well. It's that kind of a language. So and, and then to serve another, but not self serving, right? And so, um, but so yeah, we're seeing much right now. It's happening so fast. It's almost um, difficult to keep up to capture it but again it's almost saying that don't capture it just allow it to pass through you don't don't try to it's like we're at the place right now where i feel actually my heart goes out to the people that haven't done the requirement because it's it's so arduous it's been a lifetime of expression uh, as you well know 
to capture it. That's our job description. We're to experience, but there's a specific people here that are meant to capture it, to contain it. So they are the beacons in the earth that they're more of a, you know, like a, a landmark and they're, they're releasing this vibration. Yeah. And there's those that choose to turn themselves away from that. And I'm saddened by that, but they still will be given the opportunity, but they're going to see a people come into the resonance of what it is that we've all been waiting for very soon. Oh, yes. I, I truly believe that. I do. I do indeed. And it's so uh, wonderful to be able to share my heart feelings and my visions with you and hear yours and have the two just come together like the two little eyes, <laughs> you know, with the with the sacred space in between. This, it's been wonderful. Absolutely. Now, don't you guys go away, but I am going to end the video for our audience. So here we go. Thank you all for joining us. <laughs>